Welcome to the Sex Travel Sports Food Podcast with your host, Cousin Cornbread on ANDS Radio. That's ain't no damn station radio. We're delivering this straight to your earphones, your car speakers, and sound bars on that Wi-Fi, hotspots, Ethernet, T1 lines, shared data plans, or however you get on the internet. And we about to go ahead and get this commentary in and solve life's problems. Y'all ready? Set. Go. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's cornbread. Hey, what's going on, folks? This is your favorite cousin. Cousin Cornbread coming back for y'all, man, on this sex travel sports food podcast. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Episode 25, man. We're going to get it right in. I appreciate everybody coming back, man. Uh, took a little, gave y'all two. The two part joint on the last joint about Egypt. So hopefully you check that on that joint out with that uh Egypt travel review on episode twenty four. If you have not checked that out, go check that out. I uh, appreciate everybody coming back again, man. And um on this episode twenty five, man, we will be talking about in sex, we're gonna be talking about doggy style. Okay, we're gonna be talking about doggy style and apparently people who don't like it. And which, which is something I I had never encountered before, but apparently, doggy style is not top on everybody's list as far as uh, uh, sexual preference or for sexual position preference, I guess. Uh, so we're gonna get into that, man, because that was kind of weird that I found that out. Uh, and travel, we'll be talking about. I give y'all a little story about how I traveled for the first time with my gun. If you don't know, I am pro gun ownership. I'm pro uh, responsible gun ownership. So I, I'll, I'll jump into that real quick. I give y'all a little travel tip about traveling with your gun uh, in sports. Going to talk about the NBA All Star Weekend this weekend. Uh, I'm recording this on NBA All Star Weekend, so I got a little weekend All Star Weekend survival tip for the ladies. And also, just recently this morning, uh, I was watching some rodeo, and I realized something about uh, bull riding that I want to touch on real quick. And um, in food, we'll discuss speakeasies, okay? Because I just got put on the speakeasies recently, uh, and I I didn't know it was popping, all right? So, yeah, man, like I said, let me see. Uh, We're going to get right into it, and... um, let me tell y'all something, man. Uh, if you need to find a podcast or you need to tell your friends about the podcast, I done made it real easy for y'all now, man, because what I come across recently, and, at, you know, even when I started this, the, the podcast, I came up with the name Sex, Travel, Sports, Food, because those are the four things I find that are the most important things in life, okay? Um and but, but people feel like it, it seems like people have such a hard time remembering all that. And I know it's long and people will fuck up the the configuration of the name, right? Sex. They be like, oh, what is it? Sex, food, travel, sports, whatever. Or oh, what is it? Sex, buns, travel, what? And I'll be like, first of all, y'all need to calm down because it's not that hard. Sex, travel, sports, food. All right? Say it four times or whatever. But. Then I just said, all right, you know what? I have a landing page called CousinCornbread.com, right? Which is, I don't think is hard, right? Cousin Cornbread, that's not hard at all, okay? But people seem like they have a, a, a struggle with that as well, all right? So what I did is I made it so that it's going to be real easy to find the podcast going forward, all right? This is what I did. Because I come across people and they, they ask me about the podcast, they hear about it, people tell them about it, but then they just struggle to find it for some reason, okay? So this is what I did. I made it real easy for y'all. So the first one now, you can find the podcast by just going to Cornbread's Podcast. How easy is that? Is that easy? Cornbread'sPodcast.com. <laughs> I don't know how else easier to make it than that because I'm Cornbread. I have a podcast. So it's Cornbread's Podcast. Right, so tell people that they don't got to worry about going to sex, travel, sports, food no more. They can go to that; that's still active. But you can get to the same site, cornbreadspodcast.com, dot com. All right, because everybody always talking about they gonna listen to it and all that. 
All right. Then a follow on with that is everybody always go, oh, okay. So, so what do you talk about on it? Right. And so I tell them sex, travel, sports, and food. Like it's literally in the title. And you know, sometimes that kind of flies over people's head. So what I did now is what did I do? I got, what do you talk about? Dot com. <laughs> okay. So we just going to do, we gonna, I'm gonna, however y'all need to get there or tell, just, just get there. So whenever somebody go, oh, oh, okay, well, what do you talk about on your podcast? There you go. What do you talk about? What do you talk about? Dot com. <laughs> and look, I also got, look, you know what I'm saying? I went, I went even a step further because people will go and say, you know, you tell them about the podcast, you tell them what you do, you tell them what you talk about. And, you know, they kind of, oh, yeah, yeah, man, that's, it sounds good. You know, my homegirl told me, my homeboy told me, or, oh, you know, I'm nice meeting you. I'm going to check. I'm going to definitely check that joint. I'm going to check you out, man, right? And you know, they be bluffing like shit sometimes, right? But some people do, some people don't. But no excuses again. Here, you know what I got? I'll check you out. Dot com. <laughs> oh, look, y'all mother steppers don't have no excuse not to come check out your boy. Okay, your favorite cousin, your favorite play cousin, cousin cornbread man, come check out the podcast. Now, that's no, there's no excuse no more. So I got I'll check you out. dot com, cornbreads podcast. dot com. What do you talk about? dot com and the other two. So y'all don't. I just, I can't make it any more simpler for y'all, man, to listen to this joint on over this Wi-Fi and on your uh, Metro PCS data connection or whatever. Or what y'all got cricket, whatever y'all got. Uh, T-Mobile, get on it. You know what I'm talking about? Go listen to the podcast, man, and subscribe, share it, like it, leave me a review. I need them reviews on Apple Music for real. I appreciate y'all, man. Everybody, shout out to everybody who left me a review so far. All right. Also. You know, I meet people and I talk about the podcast and um, what will happen is they'll they might see me with my T-shirts on or my or sweatshirts or whatever. And most people like the statement tees that I make or even the ones that I don't make that I wear. And uh, what I started doing now is even if I don't make the T-shirt that I'm got that I'm rocking, if I can, I'll link it off of my my own T-shirt uh, selling page off my own shop page. OK. So, you know, I tell people, you know, you can go get this T-shirt or this sweatshirt or whatever you see me in. You can go get this joint on cornbreadscloset.com, right? I thought that was a little clever name, but apparently that's too hard for people. <laughs> apparently, Cornbread's Closet is way too hard to remember. Or, you know, people, oh, what is it? What is it? Cornbread soccer? Cornbread? Cornbread hanger? What? Like, I didn't say none of that. Cornbread's locker? No, I didn't. never said that. Never said Cornbread's locker. Never did. Okay? Cornbread's closet, man. All right, so, but then, you know, I said, you know what? It's too hard for these people. So, I'm going to tell them something. And I got it easier for y'all. Cornbread's T's. T-E-E-S. Okay? Cornbread. S-T-E-E-S. Cornbread's T's. Okay? That's real easy on people in the street. Hey, where you get that tea from? Cornbread's teas. Who are you? I'm Cornbread. What you got? Teas. There you go. Because <laughs> Cornbread's closet throwing them all. So Cornbread's Teas.com will get you the same place. All right? Then I even went another step further with y'all, man. Okay? Because I usually, especially when I run across dudes who like the shirts and all that stuff, you know, they try to be real cool because apparently as dudes, you can't really show another dude too much love. You know what I'm saying? You can't like show, you know, you can't really get hype about it or you can't really, you know, express too much enjoyment because you got to remain cool and calm and the, the chillest motherfucker ever born. Okay. You know, but some, but people will still acknowledge the fact that they like the joint, right? They like the shirts or whatever. So they may, they give me the little head nod. Okay, you get the little head, what's up, head nod, nah, right? And then they get you hit them with the, hey, that's a dope shirt, bro. That's what they say. They they just slide it to me real quick because they don't want nobody else to hear that shit, right? <laughs> <laughs> they don't be one motherfucker that somebody else to hear them giving compliment or praise or whatever, whatever you want to call it to another dude. So they go, hey, what's up, Dave? Hey, that's a dope shirt, bro. 
I'd be like, thank you, dog. You know, I appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing wrong with showing love. So what I did is I got that too. You can't, all you got to do to get the shirts is go on dopeshirtbro.com. <laughs> no excuses, man. Okay? Y'all ain't got no excuses. So go ahead and get it. So y'all got all the information. Dope shirt, bro. I appreciate y'all. So go get one. All right? Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, man, go support the podcast, buy the T-shirts, buy the sweatshirts, all that good stuff. But, yeah, and, and, and I know y'all might y'all might hear some of this popping as I'm talking. What I'm doing this week, man, on this episode, I'm trying out this new mic I got. So, y'all let me know how the sound come out after I export it and all that, man. It sound fine on the on the headphones right now, but, you know, this is a new USB mic that I'm trying to use. I ain't never used a USB mic before because usually... I use a preamp and cardioid mics and all that stuff, like studio quality mics that I've used before. You know, I've used over time when I was a little rapping and hosting and all this kind of stuff, man. So, and voiceovers, things like that. So, I use my, you know, my desktop stuff that I done had. But got to flex it out a little bit, get, you know, get a little bit mobile because I said I was going to start doing some joints where I go out to people's sites and, you know, have on-site shows. And interview people on site, so I need some, you know, have mobility with these mics, and the USB mic is a solution to that. So I'm trying out this junk called the uh, the Blue Yeti right now. It's a popular podcasting mic now, man. Everybody got one. Um, nah, I'm like, let me take that back. Everybody don't have one because these are nice mics, but a lot of people do use them, and I'm this is my first attempt at using one to see how the sound come out, man, because i really particular about the sound, so y'all let me know how it sounds, all right? And if, if the pop filter is a little bit off, I can already hear it, so I apologize for any pops y'all hear, but y'all, y'all will be all right. You probably didn't even notice it before I just said it, huh? <laughs> anyway, man, also, this, um, yeah, this, this, this past week was uh, Valentine's Day, all right? And my first show, by the way, episode one of Sex, travel, sports, food was dedicated to Valentine's Day, right? It was the, I think I recorded it the week before Valentine's Day. So I gave y'all some tips on about how to survive Valentine's Day for the fellas. Because I started, as long as I've been on this show, as long as I've been doing this show, I've always supported the fellas, all right? We got 10,000 shows about uh, pussy power, okay? It's 10 million. Every show is pussy power. It's always well, pussy power, like... Black Girl Magic, Girls Are Right dot com, Girls Unite, whatever. All the, you, you got the cooch, so don't talk back, whatever. It's like it's just a lot of positivity and reinforcement for the women, and it's fine, right? But we, it's not a lot of stuff that that supports the dudes, right? You know, because the dudes have a side of the story. Like we ain't all just fuck ass boys, like walking around taking advantage of shit, right? So I always try to do everything. So anyway, in that first episode, I talked about Valentine's Day and how y'all ladies be out here trying to bluff and give that old recycled pussy as a gift. And that's not right, okay? Because it's just not because it don't cost no money. It don't cost no effort, okay? And the ladies always talking about effort. You just need to make, I just want, I just I want to make effort. I want you to just make some effort. And that's all I care about is effort. We don't have to spend money. We don't have to go out. We don't have to be fancy. I just want you to have some effort. And then they come with the pussy. <laughs> I mean, ain't that the biggest, but that's a scam, okay? Because they want you to put all this effort and thought and all this shit, and they just try to tie a bow around the pussy. <laughs> They ain't made no effort in life. <laughs> Lord, they was born with that pussy. They trying to put a bow around talking about effort. Girls, die. <laughs> but anyway, man, I told y'all to go check that joint out, man. Yo, lo- go listen to that joint. I ain't even going to do a whole review on Valentine's Day today. Even though I could always go on a rant on Valentine's Day. So if you're on my Instagram or Facebook, you can go check out the post I already made about it. <laughs> but, uh. But yeah, man, I got some fun facts for y'all on for Valentine's Day, right? I know y'all done already spent all your money, spent all your time. A lot of y'all probably got dumped. A lot of probably got put in a doghouse, all that kind of stuff. You know, if both of your boyfriends showed up at the same time to the same restaurant, y'all ladies out here, 
send it, be like Alicia Keys playing them two pianos. That's how y'all be sending out them good morning handsome texts. <laughs> send them to all your boyfriends at the same time. Now you done got caught up. So y'all get that together. Okay, but I got some fun facts for y'all, man, um, for Valentine's Day. And the first one, like I said, is about spending money. I, and, it, and according to this study, the average man spends $130 on Valentine's Day as compared to women who spend an average of $70, $70 on Valentine's Day. Okay, so the men out here spending almost double. Okay, and, and I think that 70 is high for the women, in my opinion. And I think the 130 is a little bit low. Because if you go to a decent steakhouse, shit, 130 ain't going to get you. One, I don't know. That, if that's all you do, maybe, you can get out for 130. If you hit some of these, they got some specials on the menu, you might be able to get out for 130. Maybe. And that's if you don't drink no wine. If you drink some wine, you probably will forget that, that number. <laughs> uh, then you got... Apparently, 9 million people a year buy their pets uh, Valentine's Day gifts. So the dog get a Valentine's Day gift, the uh, cat, uh, the lemur, whatever you got, pet pigs, whatever it is that you have, people buying birds, Valentine's Day gifts. And I don't really know how that works because the animals just don't know. Okay, unless it's like a monkey or something that really can interact with you. I'm telling y'all now, I know y'all really invested in your pets, but they don't know what the hell's going on. Okay, you know, I got I got my dog right here now, Kobe. She in Akita. She's a one-year-old Akita. She don't know shit about Valentine's Day, but what she do know is she going to chase this soccer ball, and she going to roll around in the mud and eat all the snacks and bacon in the house. Okay, and don't give a fuck. She don't know what the hell Valentine's Day means. She just know if it's a, if it's a treat or not. <laughs> uh, let me see what else. Um, apparently, uh, you know, you can be your own Valentine. And according to this study, uh, back in 2016, 18% of women sent themselves flowers. Now, that's very interesting to me. Um yeah, I don't, I don't even know how to process that really. Um, send yourself flowers? Like, why would you even send it? <laughs> you dead ass paid for shipping and, and, and sent yourself? I don't know. I think that's a little bit extra, man. Like, y'all gotta, it ain't that serious. At least just go buy them and carry them out to the house, carry them to the car or whatever. But to pay for shipping, that's kind of disturbing to me, actually. I don't know. Unless you're getting the ill 1-800-Flowers discount or promo code or some shit like that. I don't know, man. So, yeah, y'all, I don't know. I guess that's cute or whatever. But don't ship it unless you're getting free shipping. And then you got to pick it up. It's going to be sitting outside. I don't know. Seems like more of a hassle than anything. You can just go to the store, to the flower shop, and just pick them up right there. Anyway, uh, let me see. And lastly, uh, more than one-third of men apparently are comfortable not receiving anything from their mate on Valentine's Day, which is very interesting because a lot of people say that it's not just for the women. It's for both parties, but... Clearly, no man ever believes that because it's, it's not the truth. <laughs> and then you see on social media, you'll see everybody talking about, oh, I'm a man. I don't need nothing on Valentine's Day because y'all have been conditioned to not get nothing. And it's not fair. Y'all better, hey, know your worth, kings. Y'all know that's my favorite saying. Okay? Go get a T-shirt that, that, that confirms that. Know your worth. Uh, oh, not confirm. Affirms that. Know your worth, dog. Know it. Okay, because you can't just be out here taking L's just because you trying to trying to be a man, trying to uphold some kind of random uh, idea of what manliness is supposed to be by saying I reject gifts. <laughs> Hell no. Same time, motherfuckers. Same time. I guess you you give me a gift. I, I I like gifts. It just ain't the same kind of gifts. And a lot of ladies be on here on social media asking their Asking the public, what should they get their man for Valentine's Day? And then, of course, all the chicks always come back with a whole bunch of chick shit. Oh, get him a massage. Get him a, uh, 
You know, no, they say a couple's massage specifically. And so that ain't even for me. That's for us. And that means you. So that, that's already a little bit. You in my shit. <laughs> I don't, how about I don't want you in my massage, y'all? <laughs> you can't get him a couple's massage. Y'all both benefit from that. That's kind of weird, right? See how they be trying to run the scam? They be the women be scamming out here. Or they'll just tell them other stuff like flowers or all this woman stuff. No, nobody want that stuff. Nobody want no flowers. They gonna die. You know, we don't want don't get a unless it's some really expensive cologne, I guess. No, don't get us no cologne. We don't want no ties and no clothes. Don't you don't need to dress us up. And we don't want none of that stuff. Just figure out what your man like. That's all. Just ask him. We real simple. Just ask him what he like. And I was telling the women, I was like, look. Y'all need to really be out here getting them some real life stuff that they can use. Okay, we like to use stuff. Okay, you know if he like his sports team, he can go to the game. Send, send him to the game. You know if he if he wants you to go, fine. But if he just want to go him and his homies or just him by himself or whatever, let him go to that game. Go to the game. Get some good seats. They don't gotta be front row. We get some good seats. Give them some little spending money for concessions, cause you know concessions will run you fifty dollars. So make sure you give them some 50, some some spend some concession money. Get them a little beer, a pretzel and a hot dog, whatever the hell it is. You know, give them some spending money. Let them go on. If your man smokes cigars, uh, or weed or whatever, get them that. Okay. If he on, if he smoke blacks, get him like some 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 blacks. <laughs> If he off the black and miles, get him that. You know what I'm saying? Get him some ammo. I told you I'm pro gun. Yeah, get get some ammo. Ammo is what we need. We don't need nothing else for the gun. We probably already got the accessories that we need, or the gun. Get him some ammo or some extra magazines. Okay. Get him stuff like that. Get him a. Uh, don't get him tickets to the opera. Or tickets to the you know some stuff you want to go see Alvin Ailey. I don't know why I want to see that. <laughs> Unless he was a ballerina. Or I'm like, is that a, do it a, is the man a ballerina? I don't know. But unless he was a ballet dancer, he don't want to go see Alan Ellie. I'm just telling you right now. Okay? Or unless he a choreographer, he don't want to go see Alan Ellie. You want, to go see, you want him to go to a performance? That's what you want to do? You want him to see a performance? Send him to the strip club with a stack. <laughs> Or give him two hundred dollars and say go to the strip club. That's the performance he wanna see. That's the pole. That's the that's what he don't want to see Cirque de Soleil. He don't want that. He want the, the pole. <laughs> so do that, man. Ask your man what they want. If he in the cars, get him some car stuff. Pay. If you know he go to a mechanic, talk to his mechanic, see what he need next. Go get that. Get him some brake pads. Brake pads are expensive. If he ride a bike, get him some brake lines, some steel braided brake lines, stuff like that. Helmet, helmet for his bike, gloves, new gloves, stuff like that. That's what we like. If you go to the gym, get him some gym shit. <laughs> but all that stuff y'all be talking about, man, don't, don't be giving him nothing that you would want, basically. You know what I'm talking about? So anyway, let me keep going, man. I spent too much time on that Valentine. I, need, I wasn't even supposed to talk about Valentine's Day for real, but... Anyway, let me see what else we talking about, man. So, you know, usually I do this uh the weekend called Cassidy and the weekend Black Cassidy, okay? Um this week I'm going to skip the call Cassidy just because I'm just tired of talking about it. Okay? Cuz clearly Trump with yeah, declaring a state of emergency. Uh state of nat- what is it, national emergency. He's just crazy. Trump is crazy. Um, so we ain't even gonna get into Carl Cassidy this week because I'm just tired of talking about them. But I will talk about the Black Cassidy because um, y'all's man's from Empire, Jesse Smollett or Smollett, whatever his name is. I call him Little Little Empire. Okay, that's what I just deemed him. If you follow me on YouTube or Instagram or Facebook, man, you know I had a little rant about Little Empire. Okay, so. Little Empire apparently recent I guess this morning or last night they came up with uh with information that says that he hired his boys, some people that worked on the set of Empire, to stage the robbery of him or to stage the uh the attack on him. <laughs> and this is the bad part about it, you know, because it was a big deal. They were like, oh, he got attacked and it was anti-gay. They called him a faggot and they like knocked him down. 
and said that and put a noose around his neck and poured bleach on him and all this stuff. And you like, damn, they did all that? Like, that's crazy. Like, and he only had that little one little scratch under his eye. So I already knew it was a little suspect with that. Because you don't just pull up, knock somebody down, put a noose around their neck, and pour bleach all over him, and all he got is one scratch. He ain't fight back or nothing. Or they ain't try to beat his ass. So if they going to go through all that, they probably would have beat your ass too. Like, they ain't going to just, like, leave you with one little perfectly straight scratch across the front of your face. Anyway. So I thought it was suspect anyway. So it came out that old boy hired two Nigerians. <laughs> That's the part. Two Nigerians to, to 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 stage this attack on the LBGTQ community, apparently, <laughs> and and the black community. And so you know it's fucked up. You 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 so terrible. Like this is the worst planning of all time. You could at least have hired two white guys, right? If you wanted to make it a racially motivated thing or some anti-Trump thing or something where they was against the LGBTQ, it's more, you know, they're gonna it's gonna be more likely that it's gonna be the white guys, right? Especially since you're saying that they said they was against the black shit, like they were, you're trying to make it a racially motivated attack and an LGBTQ community attack. You should have definitely hired white guys, right? Because you're not going to get away with it if it's black dudes. That's the first. That's what you're supposed to know. That's how you know this dude is disconnected. Everybody know the easiest way to get away with something is to say a white guy did it. You would, you never, because they're not even going to look for him. They're not going to look for the white guys. <laughs> but you, your dumb ass hired two black dudes. Okay? Hold on, hold on. Oh, he did say it was white dudes, but it actually ended up being two black dudes that you could see on the camera, right? So you know they're going to find them, right? You know it. You know it. They, they always find the black people. They'll never find the white people. So we already know he messed up by hiring two Nigerians. You know that's bad. You, How the hell you hire Nigerians to pose as racial prof, I mean, uh, racial attackers? That's stupid. <laughs> And then they snitched on him. That's the bad part about it. They snitched on him. He paid him, apparently, and they snitched on him. That's terrible, man. But he messed up by having to be black dudes. Because even if they found him and they was white dudes, they would have not even, it wouldn't have been, they wouldn't have kept swept under the rug, in my opinion. You know, because I, mean, I have a conspiracy theory about all that stuff. I think they'd be finding a lot of people that do this stuff, and they'd be like, nah, you good, dog. We just wanted to make sure, you know, it wasn't a black motherfucker. Well, since we see it's you. We good. We ain't going to tell nobody. We'll just say it's unsolved or whatever. <laughs> Crazy, man. But, yeah, that, that dude, the Jesse Smullett little, little empire, he was out here, got caught up, man. Because apparently he getting written off the show. Apparently, I don't watch it no more. I haven't watched it since season two. Because um, it just wasn't my jam no more. I think they were just pushing too much of the the storyline with him. And, uh, and the, at that, on season two, I think him and he had like a gay lover that came in. And they were just pushing too much, in my opinion, they, like too much of the whole like sexual dynamic between them. And it was, I'm not, I don't give a fuck what you do. You know what I'm saying? I really don't. You can fuck whoever you want, kiss whoever you want, whatever. But just the force of every single scene is just goofy. I don't even like when they have heterosexual scenes all the time, like sex scenes throughout any kind of series. Because it's like, what is this adding, really? You know what I'm saying? Like, you might have one, two here, there, whatever, but we don't need to be seeing everybody fucking all day on the screen unless we just watching porn. We might as well just watch the porn, okay? But, yeah, that season two, they started having, they were just real focused on trying to develop that storyline, and I was just like, hmm. It wasn't exciting no more because they weren't developing the rest of the storyline, which was the drama between the family, right? It was more so the drama between him and his lover or whatever it was. It was goofy, but whatever. I guess people still watch it. An old boy about to be out of a job and out of some money after they sue him for, you know, having to get all this extra security and all this type of shit, you know what I'm saying? So it's going to be, that's going to be hilarious to watch how that unfolds. So, man, unfortunately, Little Empire, you are um, the example of this week in Black Acidity. <laughs> anyway, man, let me get straight. Let me see. 
Okay, let me see what we're talking about. So that's going to be it for all that stuff. We're going to get straight into the meat of this conversation, man, which is the sex. Okay, and so sex, travel, sports, food again. I talked about all four of those things on every episode, or I try to at least, you know, unless I have a special guest or something like that, but or a special topic like I did black mental health awareness and stuff like that. But typically I touch on each one of these subject lines, or subject, subject areas, and... um. The first one on, on the sex is we're going to talk about doggy style, like I mentioned earlier, okay? What what I come across recently, man, is um, uh, I came across a, a few women who have, have disclosed that they don't like doggy style. They don't like it, um, never liked it, hated doing it, and um, I was completely shocked by this, okay, because... Doggy style is like a staple of sex life almost, right? So, like, even you know, this is like called sex, travel, sports, food. But within that, in the sex, I can't even imagine having sex without doing doggy style. Like, who does that? Like, what else do you do? Like, doggy style is the only thing that you have to do. <laughs> in my opinion, like, missionary is a, you know, I guess it's a pass. If you if you know you don't need to necessarily do missionary, you know I'm talking about like it's it's fine, it's good, whatever. But you know mission, uh, you can you can pass that. Uh, cowgirl, cowgirl is another essential for me personally. Um, one of my favorites. I think that actually is my favorite cowgirl. But yeah, you can't pass that up. And then reverse cowgirl, I'm hmm, on the fence, but that it works too, right? All kind of stuff, standing up against the wall, on the table, on the on the dryer, on the washing machine, on the couch, whatever you, all that stuff you got to have all that right. But none of this ever works if you don't start out or finish with doggy style. It just don't because that's like the the I don't even know how to describe it for me it's like the most powerful position for the man almost right well I'm not gonna say let me take that back maybe not but it's a very because you can snatch them up right you snatch them snatch it back push it back give them instruction but don't give them instructions like uh Wesley Pipes if you watch porn everybody knows who that is if you watch black porn Wesley Pipes don't talk like Wesley Pipes because he talked too much okay (laughs) yeah but when you when you in doggy style it's very exciting, right? You can grab hair, you can pull hair, you can smack the ass, you can watch the ass jiggle, you can do all kinds of stuff. You can just there's a lot going on back there. You can you got the force control. If you keep your tims on, you got the traction control. You just hit it, bam. Yeah, what do you say now? Don't talk like talk that shit, bam. You know, you push off. Okay, you got that back leg push off, hit it right. Then you grab them, you know, grab them like a man. Grab them by the grab them hips. Give me them hips, girl. Shut up. Whatever, right? You just be going in. But, so how can you not like doggy style? You pulling the hair, pushing her down, arch that back, shut your mouth. What's my name? Whatever you're going to say, right? You can't do that in no other position, right? You can't do, like, that's not, doggy style is the perfect shit talking, take back the power as the man position. And y'all out here talking about, Y'all don't do it. So I asked these chicks. I said, well, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Why don't you do it? Now, some women said they don't like the feeling of it, which I've never heard as well. I've never heard that either. I said, damn, I ain't never heard that one. Then I heard the one I've heard before, which is, oh, it's it's too impersonal. You know, that's a whole thing, you know. If you deal with somebody talking about that, you know, it's too impersonal, then you already know y'all got to have real... Um, mm-hmm. I don't even know what the word is. It got to be like all romantic all the time, and the candles, and the you got to do the sweet talk. You can't do the yeah, who is it? You can't. You got to be like, oh, I love you, baby, and I don't know where I would be without you. you got like read a novella to him or something like that during the sex. Okay, so if somebody gonna talk about it, it's too impersonal, that's just a whole nother separate category that you are gonna have to deal with. And see, I wouldn't be able to deal with all that. Okay. But I, I've heard that before because people say, oh, no, I want to I see you and all this shit. You'd be like, okay, whatever, whatever. 
So that's one other reason. So you got this. They don't like the feeling, and it's too impersonal. So I said, okay, I get it. But then I was like, well, you know, I heard another thing, which is that their man told them that they didn't like it. And I never heard that before either. I said, hold on, your man said he don't like doggy style? What the hell that even mean? He don't like to see the ass jiggle? <laughs> Who don't like doggy style as a man? I don't get that. So then it evolves into apparently the dudes don't like it because the, the dudes who don't like it are the dudes who, quote, unquote, can't reach. Like the dick don't reach the pussy from the back because they got to, you know, they, you know, the Lord didn't bless them with, you know, the size, length or the whatever to get to it. And I was like, oh, shit, like that exists. I didn't even know that was like a real thing. Y'all out here, that's a, that's terrible. That should be like a, you should be, that should be, you should be able to get a check for that. Okay, that's like a disability because if you've been aff- afflicted with the inability to have doggy style sex, that's like a, that's a problem. That's a mental health issue because you're not experiencing life right now. <laughs> for real. Like you, you have never had great sex if you ain't never had doggy style because your dick can't reach. Okay. So y'all need to start a petition. If you one of them dudes, start a petition. For real. Take that shit to the Supreme Court. Okay? Because there's no way you should be able to out here living life like that and not getting compensated for it. At least get a check. For real. Because if y'all dudes can't, the doggy style is perfect for me. <laughs> it's the best thing. But if you can't reach, that's a problem. And so I feel bad for y'all dudes, man. Shout out to y'all. If you a dude and you can't reach in doggy style, y'all hit me up, man. I'm going to send you $5 to your cash app to go get you a Frappuccino or a Slurpee or something just to make you feel bad. Get you a little treat. Okay? Because that's not right. That's just not right. I feel bad for you. And I hope that things change for the better in your future. <laughs> for real. That's dead ass right there. So. Yeah, man, I was confused about that. I was like, y'all like doggy style. That's weird. And for the ladies who don't like it from the back, I don't know what to tell y'all, man. I mean, if you really don't like it or don't like how I feel, I think it might it might be the partner or you might just have to change up the position. You might have to go from, you know, you might have to do closed legs instead of the wide legs. Okay, because that'll change up the feeling, FYI. Okay? Closed leg versus wide leg is a different little situation. So you, you might need to switch that up and... You know, sometimes if, you, if your arch ain't right, don't hit them with the cat arch. Don't hit them with the cat back. Because the cat back don't, don't, don't work for nobody. Okay? You need to have your boobs on the bed. That's the, that's the only way to do it. Okay? If your boobs ain't on the bed, you, you up too high. Shoulders to the bed. Shoulders on the mat. <laughs> Put your shoulders on the bed. Titties on the bed. Don't be doing nothing else. If you if you higher than that, you messing it up. Okay? Sheesh. And look, let me tell y'all something else, man. If y'all be running, if the woman, if the woman is running across the bed, first of all, if it's that, if that's you, ladies, stop running across the bed because we get stopped by the bed, right? We can't, we can't run through the box break, right? So even if you ain't one of these dudes that had that can't reach in the first place, if you shoot across the bed every time the stroke comes, eventually you're gonna be too far. I'm gonna have to snatch you back. So don't do all that. Okay, don't be doing all this running. You ain't, ain't nobody shoot the sprint gun. Ain't, you ain't taking off nowhere, okay? Just sit right there, calm down, okay? Second of all, don't go flat, right? Unless we, unless we know we going flat. But don't let us hit it into the flat position because that just fucks up the stroke too. So don't, don't start in the good position and then end up flat. A lot of y'all ladies be doing that, you know? So after like, 12 strokes, your ass done flat it. You know, you got, you done splayed out on the bed. <laughs> Don't do that. Get back up on your knees. What the hell's going on? Why are you flat right now? You're doing a whole hip flexor pose right now. <laughs> so pick that ass back up. Put it back up. Get that off together. And, and, and let's work this out. Okay? <laughs> So that's it, man, for that doggy style. But I was really interested in that. So I hope y'all is out there. Hopefully you can enjoy some doggy style. If you didn't get no doggy style on uh, Valentine's Day, make sure you get something this weekend. 
And um, if you didn't, if you're not gonna get something this weekend, just put it on your agenda in general to get some doggy style in your life. All right. <laughs> and uh, you know, I'm gonna actually skip straight over. It, it, in, in consideration of that, we're gonna stick with the sex stuff. I will also tie that into my sports thing, actually. So I'm gonna skip over travel real quick and come back to it. But in that same vein of sex, man, y'all be out here having a lot of sex at this all-star weekend when these comes up. Except for we had the NFL Pro Bowl weekend, right? And now this weekend we got the all-star, the NBA all-star weekend. And what I wanted to tell y'all, I know y'all out here having sex, y'all meeting people, you mingling, whatever. A lot of ladies going down there looking for the come up with these NBA dudes. All right? Having a lot of sex. So I just want to warn y'all as a survival tip that everybody that's down there that's over 6'3 don't play for the NBA. Okay, um, because they just they just tall, they just tall, and they work at Winn Dixie or Foot Locker or something like that, and they just dust the top shelves in the retail spot because they tall, they can get to the top shelves quicker, they can stock that better. Okay, so just because you're over six three, six four, whatever it is, don't be, don't get excited. Okay, because these bad might just work at IT. Okay, they might just work at. Uh, Lockheed Martin or AT and T or something like that, and they work the IT, and they just be in there reaching all the high server racks, <laughs> plugging in Cat Five cables and all kinds of stuff like that. You hear what I'm saying? Like everybody down there ain't balling. Even if they got the, the chains and the whatever, they might have rented a little fancy car. They might have rented a ghost or whatever it is. And they, them, them and their boys got a little table and all this or a booth. Nah, I saw they working IT, and, and you're just not going to live. Um, you're not going to live the glamorous life that you're looking for right now. You know, by going down there trying to get pregnant and trap an NBA player, get that NF that uh, NBA money or whatever it is. Okay, you're gonna live a real basic life. <laughs> IT money, you ain't getting. You know, you might be getting a hundred thousand. You know, some people, but you know, you might you probably gonna get be like sixty, seventy five. Okay, that's gonna be real basic life for everybody. <laughs> so ain't no need to go trap them dudes. All right, so y'all, you, you ain't gonna be on the yacht. Okay, you are gonna be in the Uber, a regular Uber, like a, and you are gonna be in your Camry, and it's fine. That's a fine life. It's just not the life that you were looking for by trapping somebody at NBA All Star Weekend. Okay, so just be prepared for that, and I don't want y'all to put yourselves out there like that. Okay, so that's my trap. That's my tip for sports. In this episode. <laughs> but let me get back to this travel, man. Like I told y'all, uh, I had a little experience with traveling with my firearm, fi- traveling with my gun. And so what happened is, this was the first time I tried to do it. And um, it was pretty simple and easy. I flew on American Airlines and I checked the website and, you know, found out that you need to have a lockbox that had a outside lock on it a padlock or a combination lock or a combination and key lock or whatever you want to do. Uh, any kind of lock that you only had the key to, right? So nobody else could open it except for you with this, whatever key or the combination, right? So you get in that box and you have to put that inside your check luggage. So that's what I did, right? I went on Amazon, saw one at Walmart, but I got one from Amazon for like 35 bucks and a little a little flat lock box that held my gun, right? And it's one it's only for one gun for me. One gun and a couple mags. Um so I bought that, locked the box up, tied it to the rail inside my luggage case because it comes with a uh it came with a cable lock that you could tie, you know, you can lock to the rail in your luggage that goes inside the lock box, you know, that that locks inside the lock box. And that was it. Tied it up, whatever, put it in the bag. Went over to the TSA, I mean, went over to the uh, check-in counter, and you have to go over there and declare that you have a firearm, right? So you say, I have a firearm to declare. They give you a little form. It's probably like three or four, five lines long. You fill out that form, and that's it. And then they check you in, and you go about your business. Now, when I checked in over at DCA in D.C., you know, they was being extra with the TSA, so they took my bag. You got to walk your own bag over there in TSA in D.C. So they took my bag. 
they saw I had they saw they had the little firearm tag on there. So they took they opened my bag and swabbed it. They asked me for the key to the lockbox. So they I guess they opened the lockbox. They uh, looked at the gun, made sure everything was cool, and they closed it back up. And I went about my business. Now, the other thing about that is that if you're carrying ammo, you can't have the magazines loaded with the ammo. All right? And the ammo has to be in a separate container that's sealed as well. So the easiest thing to do is just buy a new box of ammo. Or if you already got a box of ammo that's unopened, just take that. And don't try to put any kind of loose ammo in another king because then you're going to have to have a lock for that other thing. All right? So that's what I did. So I, had, I just bought, put a new box of ammo in there, uh, took that with me. And had the box, I mean, had um, the lock box with the gun in there, locked it up, signed the form, and went about my business. Now, when I landed in Dallas, that was the problem. So I'm standing there waiting for my bag in Dallas, and it's not coming up on the on the belt. So I'm like, what the hell? Like, everybody done got their bag. I'm sitting there standing for my bag. My bag is nowhere to be found. And they are, they, we already on a new plane to land it, and their bag's coming up on the belt now. My bag, my, my whole plane worth of people gone. So I'm like, yo, where the hell is my bag? So I'm looking. I go over to the little baggage counter and the little youngest that's working over there, you know, they like high school age looking joints or whatever. They don't, they don't care, right? So they was like, we don't know. You know, let's give me your baggage tag. They look at it like, oh, this here. And I'm like, well, I would hope so. Thank you for that. Thank you for, uh, you know, validating the bag is here. Um, but where the hell is it? <laughs> They're like, oh, we don't know. We'll just have to give you a call. We'll deliver it to your house, whatever. So I'm still there sitting there waiting. So I see this old little, this, this older lady standing on the side, and I go over to her. I th- she was, she had talked to the little youngest before she was walked around the counter, and looked like she was about to get off, right? So I'm like, I think she might know some more information than these little youngins because they don't care. They was over there playing Candy Crush and doing everything else, right? So I go over to her. I said, hey, excuse me, you know, I had a bag checked in. Look like everybody else got their bag. I had a firearm in there. I just want to make sure, like, how is that going to work out? She was like, oh, firearm? Oh, you got a gun in your bag? Oh, we got to find that. So she put, she go back around, snatched a little walkie-talkie, said something, something. Long story short, the older lady, the little manager that was getting off, she knew what the deal was. So what happened is, because it had a firearm in it, they had to send it through a special check-in. So they got to send it through the the luggage, the uh, oversized luggage claim, and it comes out next to the actual luggage counter, right? So it ain't even going to come out on the regular oversized claim. Now, so your bag will always get taken by the luggage counter people, right? They're even going to snatch it. In. It's like a special service, right? So your bag ain't going to come up on the regular belt, which makes perfect sense now. I think about it after I thought about it, right? So... Yeah, so it was cool, but I didn't know that. They don't tell you that. Nobody told me you're going to pick it up over here. They just like, yeah, just go live your best life. And I sat there for like another 20 minutes waiting for my bag. But long story, so that's the deal. So you get the bag from the special pickup. Always just go there. They're going to check your ID, and they're going to give you your bag. You got your gun. Awesome. <laughs> so I was pretty shocked by how easy it was, honestly. Um but you know, and knowing that, and then when I came back, I already knew the deal to go pick it up from the from the special little behind the counter baggage joint. Because uh, when I came back from Dallas, going out of Dallas or flying or going out of Dallas, coming back to DC, they ain't even checked my joint at TSA or nothing. Nobody asked me nothing. The the counter girl was like, "Oh, you got a gun in there? Okay, fill this little form out. Stay the same form I filled out before. Fill that out. Put it in the bag. That the form goes in the bag. Once I put it in there." That was it. Ain't nobody asked me nothing else about it. So that was awesome. So you could travel with your gun. You could travel with a handgun or a rifle or whatever you want to travel with. If you got a rifle, you can have a rifle case and just check that in as the whole bag, right? But all the stuff just got to be locked. So the good thing is you can do it. Make sure you check with the airlines and see what their specific route is. That's, I fucked that all up. Check with the airline that you're flying on and see what their specific rules are for their gun. Uh, terms because every airline doesn't have the same uh, rules all right that was on American Airlines like I said but I think they're pretty similar with United because I checked United as well but if you're on some other airline double check and make sure they would see whatever they need you to do all right so that's my little tip for 
travel that I wanted to come on this joint, man. You hear me? And then the last thing I'm going to run past y'all real quick, man, is um, in food, you know, I got introduced recently, uh, like that's like last month, to all these speakeasies in D.C. or the D.C. area anyway. Uh, and I was completely unaware that they existed. Now, my homie Eddie B., who's a comedian here, who is a, I don't like to call him a local comedian, but he's a comedian that's from the area, okay? Uh, he had done a show, and it was called, it was something called The Speakeasy. Now, I just thought it was just his, you know, that specific show and uh, just like a one-time event or like a series of events called The Speakeasy, right? But apparently in the D.C. area, there's all these speakeasies everywhere, all these different locations that you got to have like a secret code and all this kind of stuff to get into. And they have a bunch of, um, you got to have a password. And they're like hidden, right? So like they they stick with the whole speakeasy deal, you know, because I guess the speakeasies were uh, came about when during the prohibition when liquor was illegal, so you had to drink the liquor in the cut, right? You had to drink it in the basement of a church or in a donut shop or whatever you had to do to get your liquor. You just couldn't drink it above board, so you had to have a little a little jump underground spot. And so apparently around here they got a whole bunch of these joints everywhere. <laughs> And I went to one, and it was really cool. The drinks are hella expensive, but they're, like, you know, unique cocktails. And, you know, they do all the fancy stuff. They got the smoke and the bacon and the whatever. they Whatever fancy, unique cocktails they come up with. And it's always dark and all that kind of stuff, man. So it's been cool to see the fact that this is some new stuff I hadn't seen before. I had ran it past some other people, and everybody, like, I was the latest on everything. And I do be late. I do I do admit that. I be late on a lot of stuff. <laughs> and this new, well, no, that's not new. And this speakeasy thing in around here in D.C. is that thing that I'm coming up late on. So if you in your town, see if they got any speakeasies. Because it's like a cool little thing. They got a little music or whatever. I haven't been to any that had like live music in it. But I heard they have something that have live music, like little jazz joints or little three-piece bands or just whatever, right? Uh, but it's cool. It was like a cool, cool, cool experience to see that. You know, you pull a flag at the donut shop, and this door opens up, like this secret door, like dead ass opens up. <laughs> and they ask you what's your name, you with the password, all this stuff. It was cool. So if you haven't been to one, research it. Go check one out. Go find one and have a good time, man. It's something, it's something cool to do that's just not standard, not the same old club, not the same old lounge. Uh not even the same old sipping paint and all that kind of stuff. They done wore that out now, even though I like those joints. But now everybody doing the something in paint. Trapping paint, smoking paint. I don't know. They, just doing, they be doing anything in paint now. You know what I'm saying? Drink 211 in paint. <laughs> yeah, man. But go check out those speakeasies, man. And also, um, y'all know I like steak. If you live listening to this show. Uh, over any of the past 24 episodes, you know, probably in at least 10 of them, I talk about steaks, okay, for food, and uh, that's my thing. So if you got, if you like, if you ever had a tomahawk steak, then you need to try the axe steak too. So the axe steak, A X steak, is similar to the tomahawk steak. I think they cut it from like the same little rib or whatever they, and they supposedly bring it out. I haven't had one, but I saw it on the menu. And I heard about it. And they sell this junk for something crazy. It was something like $10 an ounce or something or $20 an ounce maybe. It was something crazy that they were selling it for. So, you know, whatever it was, you getting like, if you get like a 20-ounce steak, it'll run you like three fifty. So maybe it was like $15 an ounce, something like that. But anyway, try to act steak. See how that, see how that work out for you. And let me know how it turns out because I want to get one at some point in life. But that's the alternative to Tomahawk steak. And I had never heard of that before. So that's just a little tidbit from your favorite cousin, cousin Cornbread. You hear me? So, yeah, man, that's going to be it for this episode right here, man. I appreciate y'all coming back and um, checking me out, supporting. Let me know how y'all feel in the reviews, in my inbox, in my uh, DMs, all that kind of stuff, man. I appreciate all y'all. Always checking me out, always supporting. And all the new listeners, welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> but-
But I'm gonna let y'all go, man. I appreciate y'all walking with me. And um, again, if you haven't subscribed, go on whatever platform you listen to podcasts on and subscribe. I'm on all of them, basically every single one. So if you can't find me on there, let me know. You can't find me on there too. But you just probably in cousin cornbread or sex, travel, sports, food. And I should pop up on all those platforms, all right? Or you can listen directly on CousinCornbread.com. Or like I said, I got the new sites for y'all now, the new the new ways to get to it. You can go on CornbreadsPodcast.com or I'll check you out.com. <laughs> all right? Or oh, what's the other one? Uh, what you what you talk about? What do you talk about that con? Y'all can go on all those, man, get to the podcast. If y'all don't want to hear nothing else, if you want to see what else I'm doing, go on CousinCornbread.com, and you can link everything off of CousinCornbread.com. That's the landing page, all right? Um, and what else? I'm going to let y'all, that's it, man. I ain't going to bother y'all with nothing else. My last three tips, three keys to life, like I always say, uh, stay ready so you don't have to get ready. That's number one. Number two, always make a plan or you'll work for somebody who did make a plan and number three don't drink and drive you might spill some log out Hello, this is your favorite play cousin, Cousin Cornbread, and this here is an ad for my newest sponsor, Anchor.fm. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. Best of all, it's 100% free and it's ridiculously easy to use. And now, Anchor can match you with great sponsors who want to advertise on your podcast. That means you can get paid to podcast right away. In fact, that's what I'm doing right now by reading this ad. I've used other hosting sites and grown my podcast over the past year. And the best thing about Anchor is that I've never had any downtime on my shows. Once I upload it, it's there. It plays on demand with no issues. And that's essential for timing and keeping my faithful listeners happy and engaged. Go to anchor.fm slash start right now and start podcasting your little life away today log out